Hey Terrific Turtles, welcome back. This time I'm going to read you Akiak by Robert J. Blake. A tale from the Iditarod. When you first open up the book, there's a trail of Alaska. If you notice, there's a key and it says the legend. Ooh. It's talking about this trail right here. That is the Northern Iditarod route and that was run by Akiak. Some had run it many times and others had never run it at all. But not a dog wanted to be left behind. It was I did a rod race day, 1,151 miles of wind, snow, and rugged trail lay ahead. From Anchorage to Nome, Akiak had led the team through seven races and knew the trail better than any dog. She had brought them in fifth, third, and second, but had never won. She was 10 years old now. This was her last chance. Now they must win now. Crack! The race was underway. One by one, 58 teams took off for Nome. Wow. Day two. Come on, old girl, show them how, Mick called. Ha! Mick worked the 16 dogs team through Akiak calling ha when she needed the dogs to turn left and gee to go to the right. Mick was the musher but the team followed the lead dog. The team followed Akiak through steep climbs and dangerous descents, icy waters and confusing trails. Akiak always found the safest and fastest way. She never got lost. Day three, Akiak and Squinty, Big Boy, Flinty, Roscoe, and the rest of the team pounded across the snow for three days. The dogs were ready to break out, but Mick held them back. There was a right time, but not yet. High in the Alaskan range, they caught up to the Willie Kitchum in third place. It was his team that had beaten them by just one minute last year. Following the rules, Willie pulled over and allowed Mick's team to pass. That old dog will never make it, he laughed at Akiak across the biting wind. She'll be waiting for you at Nome, Mick vowed. Day four. High in the Cusco Wind Mountains, they passed tall Tim Bronzy's team and moved into second place. Just after Takaranto, Mick's team made its move. They raced Pat by War Whistlin's Prairie's team to take over the first place. Ketchum made his move too. His team clung to Mick's like a shadow. Akiak and her team now had to break trail through deep snow. It was tough going by the Ofer checkpoint. Akiak was limping. The deep snow had jammed up one of her paw pads and made it sore. Mick tended to her as the Ketchum raced by and took first place for them. You can't run on that paw, old girl, Mick said to her. With a day's rest, it will heal. But the team can't wait here a day. We've got to go without you. You'll be flown home. Roscoe took Akiak's place at lead. Aw, poor Akiak. Day five. By morning, most of the other dog teams had passed through the Ofer checkpoint. The wind was building and the pilot was in a hurry to leave. Akiak tore at the leash as a volunteer brought her to the airplane. Get that dog in, the pilot hollered. I want to get out of here before the storm hits. Akiak jumped and pulled and snapped. All she wanted to do was get back to the trail to run to win. Then all at once the wind gusted, the plane shifted. 
and Akiak twisted out of the handler's grip. By the time they turned around, she was gone. Day six. Akiak ran while the storm became a blizzard. She knew that Mick and the team were somewhere ahead of her. The wind took her. The scent and the snow took away the trail, but she still knew the way. She ran and she ran until the blizzard became a whiteout. Then she could run no more while Mick and the team took refuge in Galanaga, or Gal Galena, sorry. Seven hours ahead, Akiak burrowed into a snowdrift to wait out the storm. In the morning, the mound of snow came alive and out pushed Akiak. Day seven. Word had gone out that Akiak was on the loose. Trail volunteers knew that an experienced lead dog would stick to the trail. They knew she'd have to come through. Una Lakalit. Some of these words are tricky. She did. Six hours after Mick and the team had left, Akiak padded softly, cautiously into the checkpoint. Her ears alert, her wet nose sniffed the air. <laughs> the team had been there, she could tell. Suddenly, cabin doors flew open. Five volunteers fanned out and tried to grab her. Akiak zigged around there every zag and took off down the trail. Call ahead to the Shakatuluk, a man shouted. Day eight. At the Shakatuluk, Mick, or excuse me, Mike dropped. Yeah, it was Mick. I was correct. Dropped two more dogs and raced out, still six hours ahead of Akiak. Hungry now? It had been two days since she had eaten Akiak. Pounded over the pack trail. For thirst, she drank out of the streams. The ice had broken through by the sled teams. She struggled into Shakataluk in the late afternoon. Three men spotted her and chased her right into the community hall where some mushers were sleeping. Tables overturned and coffee went flying. Then one musher opened the back door and she escaped. Go find them, girl. He whispered, <gasps> sounds like he's helping her out. At Koyoke, Akiak raided the mushers, discard pile for food. No one came after her. At Elam, people put food out for her. Almost everybody was rooting for Akiak to catch her team. Day nine, Mick rushed into White Mountain, 22 minutes behind Ketchum. Here, the teams had to take an eight-hour layover to rest before the final dash for Nome. Mick dropped Big Boy and put Young Comet in his place. The team was down to eight dogs with 77 miles to go. Akiak pushed on when her team left White Mountain at 6 p.m. Akiak was running through Go Lovin'. Just two hours behind, a crowd lined the trail to watch her run through the town. Day 10. Screaming winds threw bitter cold at the team as they fought their way along the coast. Then halfway to the checkpoint called Safety, they came upon a maze of snowmobile tracks. The lead dog lost the trail. Mick squinted through the snow looking for a sign. There! Going right! She recognized Ketchum's trail. Gee! She called. Gee! Go to the right! But the dogs wouldn't go. They wandered about, tangling up the lines. Mick straightened them out and worked the team up the hill. At the top, they stopped short. Something was blocking the trail. Akiak! Mick called. She ran to her usual spot at the harness, waiting to be hooked in. Sorry, old girl, Mick tugged her. Rules say I can't put you back on the harness. Get in the sled. But instead, 
Akiak circled the lead dogs, pushing them and barking. What is it, girl? Mick asked. Akiak ran back down the hill. Mick laughed. Ketchum's team had taken the wrong trail. She turned her team around and rushed down to Akiak, who jumped into the sled. Take us to know, Mick called to her. Mick first heard the noise a mile outside of Nome. At first, she wasn't sure what it was. It grew so loud that she couldn't hear the dogs. It was a roar or a rumble. She was so tired after 10 days of mushing, she couldn't tell which. Then she saw the crowd and she heard their cheers. People had come from everywhere to see the courageous dog that had run the Eider Rod trail alone. As sure as she had been in the lead position, Akiak won the I did it to Rod race. Yay! Nothing was going to stop this dog from winning, Mick told the crowd. Akiak knew it. The other dogs knew it too. Yay! Go Akiak! The end. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that story and I hope that we have a great rest of the year. Bye, turtles!